Hello, everyone. How are you? So are you ready for the next week's painting challenge? Because I am. We're going to do something a little different inspired by the granulating watercolor class for beginners. There was a lesson in there where we kind of tapped on what a jungle would look like and we did it in the cobalt mist. I'm going to have you mix your own green today and that's going to be one lesson in it just itself. And then we're going to do some jungle leaves with some really cool brushes. So one brush that I'm going to be using is the Angle Shader by Princeton. This is a half inch brush. It actually comes in a brush pack. So if you haven't gotten these brushes, I suggest you get the one that comes in the pack for like $30 because it is so worth it. But I just love this brush. I use it all the time. I use the flats. I use everything in the set actually. <laughs> then my tried and true, as you know, many of you have already purchased the Escoda Versatile size 10. This is a long pointed round like a striper brush, but with a very large belly. I have links for that below. There is a smaller version of it and I'm going to be using it on this size sheet because this is my accordion sketchbook. So this is the size four in the same brush and it's going to do just fine for what we have to do. Now over here we have a list of all the Schmincke colors that I have in my set. This one is the botanical floral set that is really handy but I add colors to it. So it has lemon yellow, turner yellow, satin red, carmine, ultramarine finest, prussian blue which I'm going to be using a lot of today. Uh, May green, which I'm also going to be using a lot because we want to mix some greens. I'm going to be using the lemon yellow, the gold, which is Quinn gold. There is a uh, transparent green gold here. So we can just kind of like play with these mixing colors really easily uh, for this lesson. But whatever you have at home, you can mix greens from uh, blue any kind of blue and any kind of yellow, I suggest you get to mixing and just start trying them out and having a really, really good time mixing because that's what mainly this is about in order to shape those leaves. And then you're going to get some really fun um, ideas for leaves moving forward. So let's get started. So in my jungle to start with, I am actually going to um, give us some little flowers as anchors and they're going to be composed of a little bit of bright yellow so i'm going to put one here maybe and probably one here and maybe one i don't know if i'm going to put any in the top no maybe we'll just have one two big ones right here so that's my yellow I've loaded my uh, brush here with a little bit of the carmine, which is one of my favorite colors from Schmika. And I'm just going to kind of do a little heart shape around the yellow. And it can touch, but I'm not going to touch it too much right now because I don't want it to completely go orange. Now, one thing I love about Schmika is it will travel but not too much so i find that especially for beginners that i'm teaching in my courses you don't get overwhelmed by schminka but yet you get that high payload you know so i'm just getting in and really nice kind of like heart shape and what i'm doing is i'm going over it so that i can just kind of see what i want to do with this shape and i think that that's good Nothing too perfect, just kind of a little heart shape in this beautiful carmine. Isn't that, isn't that like the prettiest color ever? I think it's gorgeous. So what I'm doing with my shader is I'm kind of twisting it just a bit here to get this shape. And then as I come down here, I'm making the heart shape. And here I think I want a little heavier heart shape on the bottom. Yep, that looks good. So now we can kind of uh, tap into that yellow just a bit, but we're going to leave it and do a little more with it later. In fact, I am actually going to pull some of the orange out and just kind of smear it and then wipe it off just so that I can get this neat little blended look so that it doesn't look too all one color. And as I'm going through, see how I'm kind of lightening the carmine ever so slightly just by pulling my brush over it. This is just a damp brush. This is that uh, striper brush that I was just telling you about. And I'm just allowing this color 
to blend ever so slightly. We're going to brighten it up in a little bit once it dries, but we're going to give it a nice little wash like that because I really just didn't want it to be like a like a cartoony kind of look. I want it to be a little more textured. So I'm just kind of adding some shadows by removing color. And then I can add a little bit more back in here. I can also just brighten up my yellow a little bit. It's a little, still a little bit uh, wet for this. But I do kind of like how that looks. And if you feel that you have gone too crazy with this, let me show you a little tip. If you just want to take a cloth or a little napkin, lay it right over and pat it just once. You can only really do this one time, otherwise it'll take off too much. And I'm just giving you that because if you have trouble with water or you're having trouble with your paint, then that might get you that slightly light look. And see, so what it's done is it's given me a nice outline on the red without being too much. Okay, so now we're gonna mix some greens. So the first green we're gonna mix, I'm gonna take Prussian blue and I'm going to mix it this is the Schmink Oppression Blue, which is one of my favorites because it's kind of like a moody blue shade. It's not too purple. It's got almost like a green shade. And we're going to take a little bit of May Green. Mix that in there. And I'm working over two wells here. One to be a little bit lighter and one to be a little bit darker. And then in this third well here, I'm going to load up a bunch of lemon yellow. You can use any kind of yellow you want that's mixed with a little bit of green. So a little bit of the green from here and here. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab my gold. Shmika gold is lovely. And we're going to put some gold in here. And these are going to be some of my fun colors that I'm going to be kind of dabbing, dabbing around with. So taking the gold that's on here, I'm actually going to dip it into this green and mix it up in another container. Now let's just start. We're going to lay in some leaves. So starting maybe at the top, I'm just going to pull my brush down and rock it to the side and rock it to the side. Then at the top, I'm going to just turn it, do a little heart, and twist it down. From here, do a little heart and twist it down. So now as I go into my little wells, I am going to be pulling from the different greens for a reason, because I don't want my leaves to be all the same color. So see how I got that nice shape and I got some nice shadows. What's left on here, I can do another one. So here, I'm just going to pull it out. And I think this one I will do a little layered shape. Like that. So I'm just working my brush. Let's get a little more Prussian blue into the mix. And I'm going to go on the center of this one and just bring that Prussian blue and work that on the underside of that leaf. Isn't that pretty? Let's go ahead and build out another one here. I think coming off of this would be good. So I'm just going to start my center off like that. Come around. and just kind of shake myself as I go up so that I have an uneven slot here with this because we don't want 
You know how sometimes jungle leaves, they're just not all even. So the idea behind this challenge, guys, is for you just to use the colors in your palette. Bring them around and paint some really, really neat jungle leaves. I'm looking for shades and shadows and just some really cool looking, I don't know, anything in any direction, anything goes on this challenge. Just inspire us. There's a nice one in the lighter yellow. We come up here. something else and again I'm just kind of moving around my page I think actually let's switch brushes I'm going to go here and I'm going to pick up some of the light and I'm just going to go right over my spot here with some light And I don't even care if I drag some of this color off of the other leaves. I'm just looking for those kind of wispy. And you don't have to do the wispy at all. You can just do a full pattern of leaves. You guys can do anything you want. You do a leaf practice session as long as you're mixing your own greens. So we, we want several different shades of green on here. I'm going to mix a little darker green. So basically my green is just the Prussian uh, lemon yellow, a little bit of that May green, and we're going to start mixing in some golds now. So I just added some gold to my mix, a little bit more water, and that's just going to kind of give me those shades and shadows and those deeper tones. Gives us a little bit of an olive range. But because I started out with the Prussian blue as my base and I'm not switching my blues, what's happening is it kind of looks cohesive. I'm going to just kind of dry brush some stuff here for a frame. You'll notice that I will literally paint an entire painting with this one thing. <laughs> Your paints are inexpensive. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Andrea, my paints are inexpensive and subpar. I don't stand a chance at winning. No, that's not true, actually. I just had one of my winners from last week. She painted with store-bought, like, really, really cheap paints and really cheap paper. And what she was able to do with it, that was what won um, her one of the prizes. So you just never know. Just try. It doesn't have to be expensive watercolor at all. I'll watch these again when I have better paints. No, do it. Just try it. Don't give up. All right. So let's mix some more because I didn't mix enough. So again, Prussian blue. And you can use ultramarine blue. You can use cobalt blue. All the blues make different greens and they're so much fun. As you notice, I switched to my larger brush. I can't help myself. I have to pick that brush up at least once. Then as this dries, it's going to be way nicer because right now it's kind of like in that in-between stage because I've painted so quickly while it was wet which I tend to do on live streams. Typically I would wait a little bit. There's that May green and we're going to mix some of those, the blues together. This top one is going to be a little darker teal, like a really, really nice dark blue. Then rinse my brush out, grab my gold again, put my gold in there. Good. A little yellow. Okay. Now we can start again. So here, where I have them uh, drying, I can actually go back. And once they're dry, I can just give them a little more definition. So it really just depends on your painting style too, right? Uh, some people are going to go a lot lighter. Like, let's do some lighter ones.
And I'm just pulling my angle shader around here. So guys, for this challenge, don't forget, you have to paint something by Friday and go to the group page, post what you painted and use the hashtag Jack's Art Challenge. Hi there, Quebec, Canada. I'm in Oakville, Canada, actually. How are you, Christine? Hi, Janina. Nice to see you. Andrea, we've all been there at some point. Just try and have fun with the colors. Yeah, exactly. Like I have, I have so much. I was actually talking to somebody about the, what is it? The Ming set? Is it Ming? And they were asking me, you know, it's a dye base set, right? But it's really inexpensive. And I said, you know, look, if you get watercolor that you like the colors and you think it's really fun, then just use it. You know what I mean? Use it and enjoy them. I try to recommend, you know, here's the thing. When I recommend paint, I have to recommend what I'm using and what I like. Um, because otherwise I would be no good to you. If I recommend, you know, uh, other sets just because of price, but I haven't actually used them, then I don't really know what they paint like. And I don't want to see you waste your money. I mean, I did a cost accounting uh, just today, actually, for the group page of how much it costs uh, for a pan today. And the average professional pan is what, say, like $10, right, for a pan of paint. But if you buy a tube and you pour your own pans, then you're going to get them from 4 to $6. And then you're painting with, you know, professional paint. So I think it, it really just depends on if you if you look at the prices and you cost it out, you know, because you can get several full pans from a tube, a 15 ml tube, and you can get like seven and a half half pans from a 15 tube, right? So like one tube of this paint, let me pull this out. So like one tube of this paint is going to give me seven and a half of these but yet, if I just buy one pan, that's going to cost me like 10 to $12 for a pan. You know what I mean? Where this whole tube of paint might cost me like $20, $25. So I'm getting way more value if I can purchase a few colors and just get the tubes. Or another way to do it is like, for instance, these sets, right? They're curated sets. So if you find a set that really appeals to you, like this one has some beautiful colors in it. There's also a C set. There's a 30th anniversary set that's only $64 with 15 pans in it right now that I recommended the other day. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do and a lot of choices that you have, but whatever you have on hand, paint with it. Because even if it's inexpensive paint, it's probably going to perform pretty good. You just don't want to sell it, you know, or put it in, in the, uh, in the window because <laughs> it might fade. So you, and you might have a dry shift. It might get a little frustrating, you know, and if you don't have really good paper, again, you're going to get a little more blotching perhaps depending on how you paint. So you have to make some adjustments, but it's only trial and error. And at the end of the day, listen, to me, I could swatch color and feel happy about painting. I really don't care if I come out with anything <laughs> at all. I'm just happy to sit here and just paint. You know what I mean? So to me, it's all an experiment, like whether or not this is even going to work out for me. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a couple more before the end of the week. Right. Because um, I just want to just paint. It's it's about putting the paint on the paper for me that really does everything and seeing the colors. I've actually I have done my set of swatches. Let me tell you, I sometimes just for meditation, if I just not sure what I'm going to paint, I'll just pick up a brush and I'll start swatching my colors again for like the 500th time in like little trees or something or just doing a, you know, random crazy um, swatch card. Even like these, I was doing these the other day where I was redoing the swatch cards and then I just started mixing colors for the center. That is therapeutic to me. <laughs> it really is. It's all good. So just pick up those paints. I don't care what you're painting with, just as long as you're painting. 
you're going to be better for it. Makes me a happy camper. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing with layers. Um, and by all means, do not try to just do what I'm doing. You just paint some leaves on a page. And if you end up doing more of a jungle scene or you even want to add some other flowers, do what inspires you. Right now, I'm just kind of like going through here and just seeing how well these paints layer and practicing mixing different colors. I just like to uh, just, you know, have a little play before I go on my whole Sunday today. You should paint an ocean in the sunset blue. Oh yeah. Well, I have many of those actually. This is kind of a really neat looking, weird, strangely layered jungle. <laughs> like out of room. Okay, so I'm gonna let these leaves dry for a second. And then I'm going to go back and just kind of reinforce some things. So let me just touch up. I don't want to do too many things because I've already done a bunch. Um, let me grab some of my carmine and a little bit of this yellow kind of green color. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do a background. I don't think I'm going to do a background. We're just going to go and we're going to reinforce some of these leaves with some lights and darks. So here I'm going to go over some of what I painted now that this is drying so that we have some dimension. So it's past it's passing the ugly stage and it's heading into the better stage, especially when I get the foreground in. So once things dry, you can see how now I'm using the fact that I can layer this paint as a foreground. Sometimes when you're painting, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but it will have like a stage where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm really messing this up, right? But try and think past it, like try and just keep going. I find a lot of people give up really quick and they don't realize that once the paint dries, then you can go over with another layer and you can add your lights and darks. And uh, usually you'll come up with something that you're like, oh, wow, that, you know, that actually ended up really, really nicely. And I find that uh, just not giving up too early is what really makes a huge difference with that. Okay, so see how I went back in and I just kind of like layered in some of that brush. Now I'm going to go in on some of these. So mixing a little more of my Prussian blue with my greens. I just got it like everywhere here. And I don't even care if I pick up a little red, it's fine because it's going to give me a little bit darker tone of green. And I can just add some dimension to some of these leaves that didn't get any. Now I'm just kind of uh, giving some stalks in here. Make it look really full and brushy taking my blue and adding it to my green just to go a little darker. And this is just kind of like a layered jungle, you know, a little bit viney. Now let's grab um, our angle brush again and mixing my gold for that a little bit of Prussian in there for that kind of like Prussian, like dark green, almost like a forest green. And I'm just gonna add a few little shadows to some of these front leaves. And this is right now, this is just like kind of fidgeting a little bit. 
right? I'm just kind of going through and tapping in some lights and darks because I just don't personally love looking at leaves that are all one color. And they will, you know, tend to sometimes dry that way, which is what has happened here as I went really quickly. This paints amazingly evenly. <laughs> amazingly evenly, is that me? <laughs> It does. It, it actually works against me when I'm trying to do very loose paintings because I find that the Neptune is better for that. This one paints so even that I actually have to go back and add some of those painterly effects. And again, if you find once you're doing the fidgeting, if you're uh, still bringing too much to the foreground here, you can go back once that dries and add a little bit of a darker layer or a lighter layer of paint, you know, depends. So I think I've got some in the background and then some in the foreground here. This is where I wanted to add one. So I'm going to add kind of more yellow. And the yellow, uh, what that's going to do is kind of sink more into the background of my painting. so that I can kind of close up these outer areas just a bit. So there's not so much white space around the edges and it's kind of drawing the eye. It's just kind of like a light glaze. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that anybody can do a very, very light wash, uh, no matter what kind of paint you have. I can do a lot of layering with Schmincke and Sennelier, so I tend to use those, but Mission Gold layers really well too. You can do light washes with those. The Pure Pigment set is beautiful pure pigment. Um, I actually just poured, I just poured a whole bunch of them. So these ones are all um, Mission Gold and I love them. And then I have some Sennelier over here and these are White Knights. So I have a lot of peat. That's not even, that's not even it. I mean, literally like here. You guys see that? <laughs> I have tons of them. There's like so many. There we go. Okay. So looking at the color chart, the ones that I used here were lemon yellow, which is up at the top. And then I also used quinacridone gold hue, which is right on that third row. The carmine. Uh, so the carmine, I don't think I have a pointer on here, but I'm looking for permanent carmine. Okay, so the permanent carmine is right there. So it's the very first one on the one, two, three, fourth row down right above the purple for Prussian blue. You can see the Prussian located on the color chart here. I'm still trying to find it. <laughs> I can't find it. I see Prussian green. Oh, Prussian blue. There it is. It actually looks a little lighter than it is. I would say on this color chart, the Prussian blue looks more like the cobalt blue deep, but here it looks very light and and obviously you can see my, my Prussian blue sample right there. It's like much darker Then that May green is right there. That really bright green. I used that one and that's how I mixed everything. The May green was really just a, a really easy way to get into some really cool greens. And then just by playing with the gold was how we got like the yellowish green. And remember, I used the Prussian green as my base the whole time. And I created the Prussian green mix with a little lemon yellow and a little May green. And then I carried that over. So I had it, the heavier mix here, the lighter mix here, the more greeny, like brighter mix here. And then I had the yellow and the gold over here. And that way I could just kind of, you know, mix an olive and kind of float around. If you want to go back now that this is drying, if we wanted to go back and play a little bit with, um, with these, I actually like the way they look, but 
we can actually give them a glaze, a little bit of a glaze just for fun. to add a little detail like that just with the tip of my brush so I think it really just depends on how far you want to take this and how many things you want to try when I judge the uh, the contest I don't judge based on who's the better artist I based I base all of my decisions on these contests on who's been the most creative and innovative so you don't necessarily you're not being judged against people who are better than you or have more time in than you you're being judged on what you did yourself so if I see that you've mixed really interesting greens and you really like pushed your boundaries you know like say I've been watching you you for a while in my classes or something and I know how much you've improved and I really see that improvement and I see that you've done something that's like a little different and innovative. You know, maybe you've gone through and you decided to take the challenge and really stretch and just do leaves and really cool leaves in different shapes and different colors with different values. Or maybe you did an actual painting and decided to like, you know, set a scene and tell a story. Whatever it is, I'm not going to judge you against somebody who's maybe better than you or not necessarily better, but like different or maybe more experienced of a beginner. I'm going to judge you based on you. You know, did you kind of really achieve something that was spectacular? Did you give up too early? Did, you know what I mean? And I just want to encourage you to do that. So you're not being judged against everyone else. You're being judged against yourself. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy this, go have fun. Just don't worry, make a mess, make several messes. You can put up as many as you want. I don't mind. I want to see them all as long as you're painting. These are like little, little samples of things. You could even do a bunch of little red ones and like some stripes and, you know, and then just head over. I find sometimes that even the first time I paint, I don't do half as well as the next time I paint. You know what I mean? So honestly, keep painting and just have a good time. And do not wait until you get the right paints because that might never happen, my dear. You might like be looking like me forever where I'm just constantly challenging myself to try new paints and try new things, you know? Like, look at those cool leaves, right? Let's try and get some really cool leaf shapes. All right, I'm gonna sit here and just do fun, funky leaf shapes with my angle shader and see what I can come up with. You guys have a great day and happy painting, everyone. Good luck in the contest.